Osmosis. Um, osmosis is the flow of a solvent from a less concentrated solution to a more concentrated solution. Um, have you heard the word osmosis before? Yeah, osmosis Jones. Osmosis Jones? I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. It's an iconic Disney movie. Well, you know, I've, I missed out on a few. Your kids never watch. I don't know. You got to put parental views on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go do some research on that. Um, the, the place I hear this word the most often in, in real life is uh, when they talk about water purification, a reverse osmosis water filter. So once we talk about osmosis, then we can talk about what reverse osmosis is. So this is occurring when you have um, a solution that has a high concentration of solute um, in contact with a solution that has a lower concentration of solute. And the solvent moves from the, high, from the low concentration to the high concentration. You probably know that you shouldn't drink ocean water. Okay, went to the beach this weekend, and the kids get it in their mouth. They're like, yuck, why would you even want to drink that? Well, if you're stranded on the ocean on a boat, right, and you don't have anything to drink, it might be tempting. Surrounded by water, right, but nothing to drink. Drinking salt water makes you more dehydrated than drinking nothing at all. We say that salt water or seawater is a thirsty solution. It draws water out of your body. So as it flows through your intestines, um, there is salt... I'm sorry, this is the inside of your intestines. There is salt in that water, and the concentration of ions in that seawater is higher than the concentration of um, ions in your body. And osmosis causes the solvent, the water, to move from the less concentrated solution to the more highly concentrated solution. I think of it this way, that you know, nature likes to level everything out. And so it's like you've got a high concentration and a low concentration. Nature doesn't like that separation there. So it's going to do what it can to equalize things. Well, the walls of your intestines and the walls of your cells allow water to move in and out, but they don't allow um, sodium and chloride ions to move very well. So the ions would move if they could, but they can't. All that can move through here is the water, and so the water will flow to the more concentrated solution to make it less concentrated. We can see this in, um, in the lab as well. Uh, we used to call these U-tubes. Uh, that's something else now, isn't it? So this is a U-shaped tube, and right here what we have is a semi-permeable membrane is permeable to water molecules, but not to solute particles. So water can flow through here, but nothing else can. So if we have a salty solution or a concentrated solution on one side and pure water on the other side, the water is going to move through this barrier, the membrane, to dilute this side. What's going to happen is that the level of liquid on this side will increase. That is not what you would expect to happen, right? You've got a U-shaped tube, and you'll leave it for a couple hours, and you come back, and one side's higher than the other side. That's not how things normally work, is it? You would expect them to maybe start out this way and then go to an even, right? So what's going on here? Well, this thirsty solution is drawing water into it, attempting to lower the concentration. That causes the level on this side to rise up. Will it rise indefinitely? No, because there's gravity coming down, pulling it down. We've got opposite forces here, and they'll get to a point where they're equal in strength, and then it'll stop. We've learned before that if you have a different in, difference in liquid levels like this, that that is equivalent to a pressure. And so this is called the osmotic pressure. The osmotic pressure is the pressure you would have to apply to this, this side, the salty side, 
to keep osmosis from happening. You'd have to apply a pressure to keep it from happening. In reverse osmosis, you, you want to take the contaminated water and make it into pure water. Osvo osmosis is going to dilute this, but it's not going to purify it. If you put pressure on this side with the dirty water, you can force water through the membrane to the other side. That's called reverse osmosis. It's against what nature wants to do. Any questions? Does that make any sense? So osmosis or osmotic pressure is a colligative property. How tall or the, how large the difference in levels between this side and that side, how, how, yeah, I'm just not, I'm having a hard time talking today. Um, the difference in heights here is going to depend on how many solute particles are on this side. It doesn't really matter what they are. It could be sodium chloride, it be, could be potassium iodide, doesn't matter. It's the number of particles that matters. That makes it a colligative property. The more concentrated that solution is, the greater the osmotic pressure. So osmosis is used by your body to control things. Your, the cells um, in your body have membranes around them. This is about as far as we're going to get into biology. Um, they have membranes, and those membranes are semi-permeable. They will allow water to pass through and other subs, you know, selected substances, but they will not allow everything to pass through. And so your body uses osmosis. If you put a living cell into seawater, the seawater is more concentrated than, this, than the solutions inside of the cell, and it will draw the water out of the cell, and the cell will become dehydrated. We can see this with red blood cells. Red blood cells are supposed to look like this. Um, they're circular, and they've got kind of this divot in the middle. That is, um, I'm sorry, not that one, this one. Yeah, this supposed to be a little more donut shaped. So this is what they're supposed to look like. So I can't talk today, and apparently I can't read either. So, so this is what normal red blood cells are supposed to look like. And there are dissolved sol solutes <laughs> inside. The, yeah, I'm not kidding. I can't talk today. There are dissolved solutes in the fluid inside the red blood cell. And outside the red blood cell, in the plasma of your blood, there are dissolved solutes. And so the concentration inside the blood, blood cell and outside is the same. We call that isotonic, iso meaning the same. So when the concentration inside and outside is the same, then nothing bad happens to the red blood cells and they're the shape they're supposed to be. If you put the red blood cells in pure water, now the concentration inside is greater than the concentration outside. And so water is going to flow into the more concentrated solution and cause the red blood cells to swell up. If that continues, they will burst. Okay? You don't want that happening inside your veins, right? That would be bad. If you put a red blood cell into a, a solution that's more concentrated than, you know, like seawater, something that has a high salt concentration, that will cause water to come out of the red blood cell and cause it to shrivel up like this and get all spiky. That's not good either. There's a word for that. It's called crenation. You might want to make note of that word. Crenation. That's what's happening when the red blood cells shrivel up like that because the concentration of dissolved, dissolved solids on the uh, solution that they're in is too high. And so it draws water out of them. And, and this sort of phenomenon has um, a lot of different applications in real life. It has applications in cooking. Um, I remember way back when, when my husband and I were newlyweds, I made one of his favorite dishes, which is teriyaki hot dogs. You just take hot dogs and you boil them with teriyaki sauce, right? You've heard of this. 
And you serve it over rice. Well, he was late coming home because he was in grad school and, you know, he's busy. I'm fine with that. So I just left them in the teriyaki sauce. Teriyaki sauce is extremely salty. By the time he came home, the teriyaki hot dogs were like rocks that all the water had been sucked out of them. I should have known better, but I wasn't thinking chemistry at the time, right? But if you want to get water out of a food, you soak it in something salty, and that draws the water out. If you want to put water into it, you'll, pour, you'll soak it in, in just plain water, and the water will, will, will be absorbed by the, the food. Pretty interesting, huh? So why, why do you soak a swollen ankle in Epsom salts? Because the high concentration of the salt that you're soaking it in is going to draw some of the fluid, the, the, the water, out of your ankle and help reduce the swelling.